Mr. Andy News got us a new video called Tensura's Great Tenma War Explained. Now, I don't know if I should be watching this. He did say it's spoiler free. And some of my boys in chat right now went over and said the only spoilers in here is actually SAO and Overlord spoilers. That's kind of out of context. So fingers crossed that it's not going to be so bad. Let's begin what he has to say. What is Tensura's Great Tenma War? We Who is Tenma? We saw it mentioned back in episode 2, but before that, it was a world must event be a person, that we right? nothing about. A global conflict between heaven and earth, where multiple factions often fought to secure more power for themselves. So it's heaven and earth. Obviously, there's the introduction of angels recently, right? And I've been thinking like, and also, you know, the ultimate skills are named after angels like Uriel, Raphael, Beelzebub is a devil. So that's another interesting thing. So, and like Luminous starts to talk about angels and how she hates them. And I thought like, naturally as the show progresses, it's going to be like everyone on earth fighting the heavens is the end game. I'm not sure. But what about the underworld? Do devils exist as well? The core conflict was between angels and everyone else, but to many, okay. the Great Tenma War was the perfect guise to hide their own invasions. So, for a war that's set to happen every 500 years or so, here's a spoiler free overview of every 500 years the Tenma War happens? Of what you should already know about the Great Tenma Sounds like it's some kind of culling, like the Heavens does. Like, it, this is some has been hotel shit. Like, every year or half a year, the Angels or Exorcist comes down to hell and kills people to. Restore balance of souls? Tenma War. To start with how significant it is, you can probably compare it to something like a world war. I mean, it's a major event with enough consequence to warrant its own Walpurgis conference. This was because the war would cause the descent of what's known as angels, and these angels would attack pretty much- Is- Is- Is this the essay of spoilers or overlord spoilers? There's apparently there's some like, oh, like, like out of context like spoilers from different animes. Anything and everything. We don't know how strong these this angels is overlord? are exactly, but the if they're fuck? threat enough to force the demon lords to convene, then I would assume they have enough power to cause quite a bit of damage to them. Especially when you consider how angels were the natural enemies to demons. That didn't mean demons were the only targets they attacked though, since when the angels appeared, pretty much no one was safe. At first glance, their destruction may seem indiscriminate, but after a closer look, it was deemed their attacks tended to focus on the more developed cities and towns. Why? There was no particular reason given to this behavior at first, but now that Hinata has had this discussion with Louis, we know for a fact the angels come in response to humanity's advancement. The fuck? Angels want to show up and fuck up human advancement? The angels are scared of people getting tech in modern, you know, civilization, which one day could then target the angels. That's that's the kind of idea. What the fuck? So, so everything that Rimuru has been doing must be so scary for the angels, huh? Because we are actually advancing roads, you know, transport of goods. Like even like if we get trains involved, the angels would be so scared of the trains, right? I wonder how they feel about the ramen shop. It's like, oh no, they're bringing in Japanese ramen to our fucking isekai world. The angels are going to show up. Should a certain empire or kingdom develop beyond what's considered the reasonable threshold, then the angels would appear and the Great Tenmo War be triggered. Every 500 years, civilization grows and grows, but there's a threshold that the angels feel comfortable as they can control the masses as long as their technological advancements is not too high. But when it starts to get a little bit scary to them, because they feel threatened, the angels comes down, wipe people out, and then we restart. Dumb as fuck! <laughs> this is so fucking stupid! No, no, the plot isn't stupid. The angels' motives are stupid. But I guess it's because they're just so insecure and scared that one day their power could be toppled. It seemed like their goal was to keep humanity stagnant. Even Hinata didn't know for sure, but considering the recognizable pattern under which these angels operated by, advancement was clearly the cause for such a catastrophe. Uh oh. Now, the angels usually appeared once every 500 years or so, but should a civilization like Tempest pop up and develop faster than all the other nations, uh -oh. then there was no doubt a Tenma War would be triggered faster. How far away are we from a Tenma War? This is all the things that we've been doing without even realizing we've been doing, right? Because, like, Tensura has been, from the beginning, Rimuru just, like, creating a sanctuary and, like, advancing civilization and having everyone, you know, be part of it. But this is gonna be increasing the... Sorry, short, shortening the amount of time for the angels to show up. You're like, what the fuck? 
There's been 500 years of advancement done in, in the last like one year. What the fuck is going on? And then they'll show up and clap us. But at that point, that's, I feel like that's probably so far away still. But like, it'll be literally everyone on earth versus the angels. Unless there's like a certain group on earth that has like a preferential treatment from the angels. I don't really think that the church really has it, do they? It seems like the churches are like the angels' bitches, and Hinata's kind of hurt. Luminary, Luminous is kind of upset at that. But isn't that good enough of a reason for everyone to unite together and throw away this Luminism thing and, and, and adopt Rimuruism, or people are saying Ramanism? And, you know, for the sake of beautiful Raman and Gyoza, we will all, you know, band together and wage war against the fucking flying insects so that we can all enjoy Japanese ramen together in peace. It's actually the reason Hinata had set out to eliminate Rimuru in the first place. If really? If she was able to destroy both him and Tempest, then the cycle in which these angels appeared would revert back to what they were initially planning for. That makes a lot more sense. Shit. Because, like, I thought that the whole reason that Hinata getting tipped off by Yuki and the Eastern Merchant was just basically vengeance. Like, hey, this is the person that kills Shizu, your master. Take him out. Also, monster. Monster bad. We're Luminism. Take him out. But it's like, wait, there's this drastic event, which is pretty much like the reckoning that happens, like, every 500 years. And this slime is about to fuck everything up for us. Take him out. That makes a lot more sense on why Hinata would attack. Now that Rimuru was messing all that up, though, things were accelerating far faster. It I'm was sorry, clear guys. The angels would I'm sorry, guys. I've, I've accidentally placed you on 480p hell for some reason. Let's, let's, pr let's bring it up to 1080p. <laughs> Here we go. Pair in response to Tempest's advancement, and that was way ahead of what they were anticipating. Whatever plans they were putting together to ensure their victory when the angels appeared next were no longer going to be ready, and that was detrimental to them. Okay. You see, unless absolute victory against the Angels was certain, all other outcomes of the Tenma War included significant loss of life. Countless innocents would be massacred in the chaos of it all, and this was what Hinata was plotting to prevent. Damn. She was expanding her forces to create a more competent combat force. This just makes Hinata so much better. This just makes this church even kind of so much better. Everything was for everyone, you know? Yes, the monsters are, you know, getting attacked by Hinata, but like, if you think about it, the actual greater threat that imposes on everyone on Earth from the angels, you know? As well as was using Luminism as a means to unite nations and help them cooperate. Okay, yes, but only human nations. I feel like Rimuruism or Ramanism, you know, was uniting everybody, not just humans, but monsters and everyone alike. If by the time the angels appeared, multiple countries fought against them together, then their chances of victory would be that much better. I see. So this was what he- I feel like that's very short-sighted because the goal is to have enough forces band together to fight against the angels. But you are in, in, in just basically cutting out a huge portion of your forces. Like, why not monsters and humans? Like, humans I get, but like, Monsters and humans together, I feel like you're missing like 50% of the cut. Hinata had been working towards, and she wasn't about to let a nation of monsters get in the way of that. At least that's how she thought back in Season 2 anyway. Other nations decided to take the more covert approach, and that included Gazel's Dwargan and the Sorcerer's Dynasty of Sadion. With dead? the former being underground and the latter within the hollow of a gigantic tree, these were the best bets for either to keep themselves safe. Dalion is actually in a tree, I did not know. Sure, the infrastructure costs were likely immense, but if it meant staying hidden from the inevitable danger, then it was more than worth it considering who they were up against. Especially since Dwargan's level of advancement likely made them a prime target for the angels. I wonder if the angels even know. Like, like surely they must know. It's not like, oh, we made a civilization underground and they can no longer understand our epic fucking dwarf craftsmanship. Like, like they, they have to know, right? We, we can't just hide in a tree underground and be like, oh, they can't see us anymore. They're not going to know about our civilization. I, I, I would think that the angels would know more than that, right? The Western nations created the Council of the West as a means to cooperate, but not only did this protect themselves from any sort of monster attack, it also increased their likelihood of survival during a Tenma War. Rather than hunker down the same way Dwargan or Serion did, the nations of the West followed Hinata's Bell approach means. and established a united front of sorts. This likely wasn't just for the Angels though, since the Tenma War often served as a means for other factions to gain power. 
Mm, right? It's like a server reset. It is like a server reset. Like, it's like a seasonal thing, right? Everyone progresses, everyone progresses. Angels show up, reset everything. Who comes out on top? People who were ready to profit off of that. Do you think there's an like exist? I mean, Aninius is showing us the Rotso family right now. And I'm sure the Eastern merchants are very aware of this shit. You think that they tip the angels? They have contact with them? Let them know what's going on so that after the server reset, they get some kind of special reward? How would people profit off of that? They would, I mean, if you're doing a server reset, having a shitload of stockpiling, shitload of resources, some kind of commodity that is essential to development after a server reset is probably going to put you in a pretty good place, right? You see, angels weren't the only enemy to worry about during them. Monsters usually followed suit and attacked right alongside them, and there were even some demon lords who used the Tenma War to stage invasions of their own. Oh? I mean, if a human nation- Which one? Which, which demon lords did this shit before? Well, uh, that's, that's spoilers. That's, that's spoilers. ...was already under attack, then why not take advantage of the chaos and try to conquer them while- They're just they're looting. Looting. This was what happened during the Great War over a millennium ago, and it was apparently a great tragedy for pretty much everyone. Now. That's not to say humans weren't dangerous on their own either though, since if there was any nation who would be considered the most antagonistic in the next war, it was without a doubt the Nazca Namrium Omeria United Eastern Empire. <laughs> Nazca Namrium Omeria United Eastern Empire. What the fuck are these names, dude? What? They making this shit harder and harder for us, bro. The Nazca Namrium Ulmeria Unite. They're, they're the Eastern faction. Let's, let's just call them the Eastern Empire, bro. <laughs> yeah, let's cut off the fucking the NNUU. It's just the Eastern Empire, all right? An empire whose thirst for power made them a wild card. Should the Western nations exhibit any signs of weakness? And like, we haven't really even interacted with the Eastern Empire just yet, right? Like, who is the closest of the Eastern Empire that we really inter interacted with? Maybe kind of like Falmuth is the, is the closest, right? Like, Eastern... The, the East is, like, so mysterious. We only know of, like, I guess the Eastern merchants and this existence of this empire now. I'm very excited to see what the Eastern Empire is about. And, like, the greatest current hero ever is Masayuki. He is from Ingracia. This is still not Eastern. The Eastern brothers must have some crazy OP people, right? Because so far, all the demon lords, all the important people have existed in the map that we've known. But the East is like a separate map. I don't fucking know anything. They must have their own separate people that's just as strong as demon lords, right? ...and exhibit any signs of weakness, then it was more than likely the Empire would try to take advantage of that. So, not only did the Tenma War bring an army of angels who fought practically indiscriminately, but along with it was the constant threat of invasion from monsters, demon lords, and other nations. It was a wild and frantic world war involving angels, demons, and humans. Is this SAO or Overlord spoilers? Out of context, it doesn't really matter. Humans all slaughtering one another. I wanna guess SAO. Is this SAO? It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's SAO, right? All right, all right. Not even demon lords were. Is that? Is, 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 is that Jack Black? It's like, no, no, Jack Black. Whoa, whoa. Johnny Black! What's his name? Johnny Black? No, Z Red Eye Zaza's done. No, Re Red Eye Zaza's done. Who's the other dude? Was it Johnny Black? That's right. Johnny Black, he got away. Is that Johnny Black? Slaughtering one another. Not even demon lords were safe from the conquest of it all since their competitive nature occasionally resulted in them fighting amongst themselves. Like, Guy was never a fan of having too many demon lords, since to him the title of such belonged only to the strong. And you gave it to fucking Clayman, of all people, bro. Well, that's just like a title, and then Rimuru is actually a true demon lord. So maybe what Guy is talking about here is, you know, the actual demon lord status. I fucking hate that Clayman was titled a demon lord, bro. The reason he never objected against it, though, was because he knew when the Tenma War came, all the weak demon lords would be called out. I see. That's why he kept 
scrimmed it, Clay Man around as fucking cannon fodder for the ten mile war. That makes sense. Okay. They would be eliminated from their ranks and then only the strong would remain. Okay, that makes sense. This that makes was sense. Yet another aspect making the war. I was only wondering, like, why the fuck did someone like Gee, like who, like everyone knew Clay Man was a fucking idiot from the beginning, right? No one respected him. Why are we keeping him around? Oh, I see. They're basically just enlisted soldiers for the ten mile war. I got it. Got it. Even bigger, and there's probably more to it than even that. For now though, the way the Tenma War currently affects Rimuru is mainly with regards to his plans for Tempest. He's directly stated how he wants Tempest to be the richest city in all the land, but given how that would just make it a target, he figured it was smarter not to develop the most important facilities until he had the resources to defend them. It wasn't a precaution that was necessarily the most important right now, but it was certainly something on mind when considering Tempest's development. This is Rimuru's opinion? of slowing down the development of facilities? Who told him about the Tenma War and the Threat of the Angels? Because in the anime, no one fucking knows, really. At least we don't know. Wouldn't Raphael be able to tell us? Wouldn't Raphael be like, uh, hey, bro, we, we should, like, stop. Like, like, the angels are gonna attack us, bro. Like, the, they're gonna show up in, like, next week if we keep developing like this. It was mentioned by Ravmeters. Ra Raphael should know this shit. I mean, she's the AI of, of this entire fucking world, right? I, or also, I, when the Tenma War happens, will the word of the world, the voice of the world, like, say, ah, shit, it's Tenma War time, good luck, everybody, right? I feel like that is, like, a world event, like, just before the Tenma War happens, it's like, woo, 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 here we go, wrap in, folks, the angels are coming. So, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Tenma War so far, and it's a driving factor in a lot of the decisions we've seen made in the anime. Okay. The war itself is likely quite a ways away, but it's certainly inevitable no matter what any nation does. Really, the most anyone can do is prepare for when it finally happens. Yeah, we should be uniting every nation together. Enough of, you know, doing a little infighting here and there, trying to cuck each other down and, and, and you know, kind of like delay the inevitable. We should like face forward and like unite everybody, but there's gonna be those groups that's gonna again, like bad faith actors that's gonna act like they're like part of the, the cause but then are secretly just waiting to profit from it and hoping in the demise of everyone else like that's what rozo family is about is is that it whether that be staying in hiding or forging deeper alliances it really just comes down to what those in charge think their nations are capable of all right now before i go if you know what to do it's 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 his uh it's his uh fan merch stuff so guys Please go support Mr. Any News on his merch. Like his video, subscribe to his channel if he hasn't. This Tenma War thing, it really did just slip by my mind. And when they were like briefly talking about it, I'm like, whoa, Tenma War. But then it's like the existence of angels also just kind of to expand the world. And then now that we have knowledge of this like inevitable attack from the angels, this culling, like server reset, whenever civilization has reached some kind of threshold, that is so interesting. That plays directly with the themes of, tem you know, what we've been doing throughout this anime, right? This anime has been just civilization. It's just all about, you know, expanding our territory, creating new ways of living. You know, right now we're like focusing on trade and making sure that we are the main hub of all this different trade. Maybe we're going to get trains involved. And then if we do, the angels are going to be like, uh-uh, uh-uh bad and then they come and attack so we need to be aware of the tenma war i don't think rimuru really knows at least in the anime it doesn't seem like he really thinks about it or else why would he be so willing to just like develop the nation maybe there's some dialogue in the light novel that's been kind of cut off from the anime intentionally so that the audience doesn't you know immediately know about this kind of stuff but like this is crazy and yeah the ramen or the gyoza bro if the angels knew about that shit oh my god <laughs> the tenma war has been triggered and we must fight in the name of ramenism that's it for me